Thanks, Rob, and thanks for that great introduction and all the organizers of TWIN. Uh, it's really great to be here. Um, I think, having heard a little bit of the arguments today, what, I, what I'm about to say is probably not as controversial as I thought it might be. I think it is necessary for us to survive the future as a civilization and as species to move to the metaverse. I think that is our next frontier, and it is not space. Perhaps that should come later, and this is sort of the argument for that. So if you look at the Earth, it's about four and a half billion years old, and uh, life is a self-replicating process, a chemical process. Its drive is to accumulate energy and matter, and matter allows it to build itself, to replicate, to spread, to propagate. If you take humans, we came from that. Humans are about three million years old if you look back at Australopithecus. And in that time, about 300,000 years, which is about 10% of that time, we've seen anatomically modern humans. And for 3% of that time, we've seen civilization. Civilization enabled humans to rely on one another, to be incremental in development, to build technologies that would allow us to reach further and further, to take us, ourselves out of the food chain. We're no longer fighting survival against predators. We are fighting a different race against each other, competing, striving for more, striving for greatness. This progress acts as a double-edged sword. We've gone through from the Stone Age to the Iron Age to the Industrial Revolution. We've unlocked nuclear power, developed the Information Age, built sprawling cities, built a civilization that I hear can be seen from space. Perhaps Dylan would know more about that. <laughs> um, and as a result of this, we have taken much of the resources of the planet in order to power ourselves. Our civilization today is unchecked in our ability to expand, whereas the rest of nature has its own checks and balances. Every species fights for survival amongst others as part of that ecosystem. Humans have steps outside of it. We are no longer chasing after our base physiological and physical needs. Instead, we try and satisfy higher level, higher order needs, psychological ones, in the pursuit of esteem and self-actualization. For example, nobody really, for physical or <laughs> physiological reasons, needs a Ferrari. These satisfy certain higher order demands. Um, <laughs> In this quest to satisfy our minds, we leave spent matter in our wake. And that leads to devastating outcomes. Deforestation, desertification, wildfires increasingly brought upon by a changing climate caused by us, the overutilization of Earth's resources. The human ability to exploit the planet is ultimately unsustainable. If we achieve longevity, for example, then the problem compounds because you no longer have death and you have more people. The ambition is not going to go away, it's intrinsic. The problem with human, the human civilization is scale. And it is not even about the number of humans. It is not about biomass. There are other species that beat us on both fronts, and yet they are part of a sustainable planet. Why are we different? The solution to this, to the human drive and need for more, is perhaps, as some would like to think of it, space exploration. That's largely the public rhetoric. But perhaps that's not correct. The technology for space travel has certainly advanced, and I do believe it's important. I just don't think it's the answer if you think about the timescales we're talking about and the problems that we have in front of us. Even if we were to, say, become a species that can settle on our nearest neighbor, or terraform it. If we were to become an intergalactic species at some point and terraform other planets, this is a future that is really, really far out. And the science and technology behind it is highly speculative and theoretical at this stage. We're not going to achieve it in the span of a few decades. And the problems are here and now. We're more likely to solve longevity before we solve terraforming a distant planet on a distant star. Even if we were to succeed, we would introduce social and personal problems. 
we are not evolved and adapted to deal with relativistic concerns. So, then what is the answer, really? Well, let's say that we were successful in finding an exoplanet, traveling to it, settling it, terraforming it. We're talking about centuries for doubling our capacity, and that's with perfect exploitation of that planet. So the upper bound is a 2x for something that's centuries away. Perhaps the answer, the alternative, is a digital one. And Rob talked about this today. It is inevitable that in the near future, we are going to have virtual reality that is indistinguishable from physical. What is the upper bound when we move psychological needs of humankind to the virtual? Energy becomes the prime resource with which to power those needs, not matter, not the exploitation of Earth. There's still a requirement for our base physiological and physical needs, but much of our psychological needs are satisfied through energy. And the equation for that, Einstein's mass energy equivalence, gives us that upper bound. So it's for a unit of matter when converted to energy, the output is scaled by a factor of the speed of light squared. That's a number that is 10 to the 17, or, or close to that order of magnitude. Uh, in other words, 100 quadrillion, the number there is a bit off, uh, but 100 quadrillion is the correct number. Um, and that is achievable in a few decades of progress. This will lead us to a sustainable future. It's not to say that we necessarily have to ex fully exploit that up about, but a 10x, a 100x, a 1,000x yield is very realistic, given an upper bound that large. Technologies are already in flight and in progress to move us to this future. I mean, it's very precursory, things like VR and haptics. Perhaps the next stage is certainly neuroprostheses, interfaces of, of novel kind that helps us not distinguish between what we are experiencing in the virtual and the physical. And then, of course, humans, we evolved to be territorial, just like animals. We need ownership. Things like scarcity matter to us. So finding a way to have digital scarcity and ownership are important, and those technologies are themselves underway. Eventually, when we are able to do this, it makes sense that our physical existence is simply tied to or optimized for the well-being of the body, and for its longevity. And we satisfy our psychological needs in another realm altogether. Many traditional problems that are difficult to overcome given physical constraints become trivial as a result. For example, teleportation. Even if we achieve teleportation in the physical world, even theoretically speaking, there are problems. You're likely creating a replica of yourself, not really moving from A to B. Um, but in the virtual, these problems just go away. On a more pragmatic note, industries such as enterprise, uh, medicine, and others, entertainment being the front runner, or gaming, I guess, to be more specific, is the one that's pushing at the frontier of this technology today. There are many rewards and benefits to be had on these frontiers. So, what we're working on at Metagravity is really solving the problem of building large realities. It's lost on many, but the server technology for multiplayer experience is not that advanced today. You can really have about 100 people in a shared reality. But if you take a website like Facebook, there are 1.5 billion users monthly active. It's easy on the web. It's very difficult when you have a real-time shared reality. And that is the problem that Metagravity is working on. How do we build virtual worlds of arbitrary simulation scale and do that with great computer efficiency, minimize energy consumption, and an ease of use that looks something like multiplayer game development today? Of course, we have to extrapolate forward on all these technologies to get to the future that we're talking about here. But that is within our grasp. So here is a demo. Would it play if I press the green button? Yeah, OK. Here's a tech demo that we built with the architects at Zaha Hadid who are looking at what spaces in the metaverse may look like. 
The important thing here is that we've scaled this up to have tens of thousands of players in a shared reality. And we actually had to go back and forth between them. To really create enough space, the initial design was not sufficient when we're talking tens of thousands. Here we have full cause of reality, collisions, self-consistency, physics, and yet it is one gigantic reality bigger than anything seen before. In 2019, with my last company, we set a record for the largest number of concurrent players, which is 14,000, and this easily leapfrogs that. We're already working on technology that's 10x of this. So with these advances, increasingly some of the fundamental problems in compute and concurrency and so on are becoming possible. There are other advances that will take us there. So finally, I'd like to leave you with a thought that as a civilization, if we are to survive, we must navigate towards a matter-efficient existence. And that next frontier is the metaphysics. Thank you. Thank you, Rashid. Thank you. Um, before, uh, before you sit, let me ask a question. Yes. Um, what about accessibility? Um, we know that technological capacity is here to come. Yeah. It's, it's not a problem. But it's clearly, we clearly know that in the existing metaverse space and in the virtualization space, there is only a few handful of companies yes. who are developing that. How are you planning to develop this technology yes. globally and for good? The one problem nobody's really solved to date is scale, and many have worked on it. Many of the large companies that you mentioned, as well as the ones that have been sort of in the public eye. And solving scale is not something that can be done by a metaverse builder themselves. It's a very hard problem. What we intend to do is make this technology over time available as an open platform that anyone can build on. We don't believe in the metaverse in the sense that, say, some of the social media companies and some of the gaming companies have expressed it, which is it's a single world with a single type of reality. We believe that it is a collection of virtual worlds and experiences that have to be built by different players. Mm -hmm. The one piece that we're solving for all of them is if you want that world to scale to more than 100 players, this technology is necessary. Mm -hmm. and we'll have this out of the box for your developers to use and build on. Right? With that innovation, we democratize scale and we, democratize, we even the playing field between different companies competing to build these experiences. Thank you.